Um, hey guys, what is up, and welcome to my overclocking guide for AMD Radeon GPUs. In this one, I'm going to be using a Radeon RX 6700 XT Sapphire Pulse Edition, but this should work, in theory, with any 6000 series GPU from AMD or higher. The core philosophy, the main methods are the same, and even NVIDIA users should be able to follow along, even though they will have to use MSI Afterburner for all their settings. Whereas like for AMD GPUs, one can just use AMD software because AMD has very nicely provided us with a very good tuning interface which can provide all the settings that you need for your CPU, GPU, whatever. And this is what I'll be using in this video. Number one, is overclocking safe? Well, yes, but actually no. Or should I say no, but actually yes. Because the way that your GPU works, these GPUs um, like modern GPUs, they are very well made and they have all the fail safes or safeguards in place by the manufacturer to make sure that nothing ever goes wrong. Because this is AMD's official piece of software, they don't even give us a warning or anything. And that is because overclocking through this software is 100% safe. There is nothing that can actually damage your GPU from using AMD's own software, okay? But there are some methods, some ways in which you can, you know, mess things up. But that usually requires, um, like, unlocking your GPU's limits, you know, like, um, for more voltage or whatever. But because we are not modifying um, the BIOS in our GPU, it doesn't matter. And basically, anything that we do here, like, even if I just do, you know, like this, this, and, um, I mean, like, just max out everything, it doesn't really matter. Nothing bad will go on. Nothing bad is going to happen, okay? Nothing bad happens because my GPU has all the, the fail safe safeguards in place to prevent anything wrong from happening. And when we decrease the voltage a bit too low, sometimes you will see um, garbling effects on your screen known as artifacts. And even though they are very terrifying to look at, very scary, your GPU in fact will not be damaged because that is only the the result of like some inaccurate computations which are caused by not enough power going into the GPU. So once again, that is not going to damage your GPU. Lower power, which is called undervolting, is never going to damage your GPU, even if it crashes while doing it, okay? Crashing is an integral process in undervolting and overclocking or whatever. And overclocking is different from undervolting, okay? Overclocking means to increase the clock speed on the GPU core or the VRAM, whereas undervolting is decreasing the voltage that is actually supplied to the GPU core, and the lower your voltage is, the more um, efficient your GPU is going to run, and for best results, like increase your uh, core clock speeds in addition to decreasing your voltages, which will basically give you um, better performance than stock settings, like better than out of the box, while using less power and getting less hot. So lower temperatures and lower voltage, but better performance. It is the best of both worlds. And basically, with lower voltage, your components, they are going to last longer. So basically, not only is undervolting extremely safe, it actually extends the lifespan of your GPU because you are feeding it less power and it is still able to do the same amount of work, okay? So less power means it will keep on running properly functioning for way longer, which is why I undervolt every single thing which I own. Yeah, my CPU, my GPU, my memory, everything. And it is perfectly normal to have crashes while doing this, okay? It is part of the process. So number one, just open your AMD software, go to performance and then tuning and then Scroll down to your GPU, mine is an RX 6700 XT Sapphire Pulse Edition, and just click on Custom Tuning over here. Enable all of these um, different buttons, Advanced Control, don't worry, it is not very dangerous as I told you. All of this needs to be changed, okay? So just do this, and then number one, we are going to decrease our voltage, okay? so. Mine is 1200 millivolts by default. Decrease this by um, 50 millivolts, an offset of 50, okay? So do 1150 millivolts. Don't change this maximum frequency just yet. 
but decrease this value by 50. And then play a game, the most intensive thing you have, like maybe Cyberpunk with, you know, ray tracing enabled, which doesn't really run very well on this GPU, but just do anything that stresses the frick out of this GPU and see if it crashes or you see any garbling, any driver resets or any artifacts. Once again, that is not going to damage your GPU because that is only a consequence of using lower power, okay? So like, even if you have the same exact GPU, a Sapphire Pulse 6700 XT OC edition, this value might not work for you. Or maybe an even lower value works for you because every GPU is built different and has different limits. So yeah, 1080 is the lowest I can go. Going any lower gives me certain artifacts when playing games which really stress the GPU, you know? Like maybe at 4K or at 1440p with like um, very high settings in some games. Um, Artifacts seem to appear at 1070 millivolts, but nothing wrong happens at 1080, so this is my preferred value, but yours might be higher or lower, so just experiment accordingly. And your frequencies might also differ because this is the OC edition of this GPU, and maybe you have like a 6600 or a 6800 XT, like that differs, and basically every GPU has a different limit, different clock speed you can only really figure it out on your own, right? Number two, go to your VRAM tuning, and basically the VRAM for my GPU is at, I think, 2000 megahertz, but I will just take it to um, 2112, and this 12 is pretty important because for some reason, there is like a negative 12 offset in the actual VRAM setting which is applied, so this 2112 here actually becomes 2100, okay? And the 2000 default is actually like 1988 for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. And, and after this, test again to see if anything goes wrong. And after that, change your memory timing from default to fast timing for an even bigger performance boost. Yeah. And apply it, and then increase your GPU's power limit by maximum, so 15% on my GPU. And remember, this doesn't mean that your GPU is going to use 15% more power all the time. It will only do it when it needs to. Like If you overclock this too high, it is going to need some extra uh, juice, okay, to make it not crash and actually work. And this basically, in most cases, has no effect on your temperatures and the voltage is like at 1080, so it doesn't matter. This does not affect longevity, okay? It only affects performance and makes it better. And just to be clear, um, do not use a single 8-pin connector cable with your GPU which needs more than one, okay? That is something which I did in the past and these settings kind of crashed because, yeah, one 8-pin, while it is enough, it sometimes cannot be. So now I'm using two 8-pins on my 6700 XT which are two separate 8-pin connections coming from the back of the PSU. So we have plenty of power, headroom to deal with. These two cables can deliver like upwards of 300 watts, and this GPU can only um, use up to like 220 maximum. So this is very good, and nothing should crash, okay? And basically these are my preferred settings, and also like, use a more aggressive fan profile to decrease the temps even more while gaming, because that is basically something that you should be doing on every GPU, because, yeah. And this basically makes it so that um, at these temperatures, like, as the GPU temperature approaches 67, the fans, like, ramp up to, like, almost 50%, and so on and so forth. And this is a very good balance for um, low noise and very good cooling, while also... Um, allowing for all of these tweaks that we have done, alright? And this is basically my preferred settings, it should all work. And because I am recording on the GPU, I will not like test it right here, but these are my settings. Yours may differ, maybe fast timing crashes for you, it depends on um, like every GPU, like, it is different, so if fast timing gives you like artifacts or garbly messes in games, just go back to default, and maybe you shouldn't overclock your VRAM at all, but overclocking VRAM is in fact more beneficial than overclocking your GPU core because I did not do it, but I did overclock my VRAM because VRAM overclocks increase your bandwidth, which is 
um, how fast data can be um, read and written to and from whatever, um, like from your VRAM basically. English is not working, but you get the point. So in VRAM intensive games like maybe Forza or Cyberpunk, whatever, you will see an insane FPS boost by just increasing your VRAM um, speed, okay? So this is very important, that this is the core focus of GPU overclocking these days. And now I will show you the difference between um, like these settings and the default settings on paper, like using GPU-Z, so default tuning. Everything goes back to normal and I will just um, open up my GPU-Z real quick to look at the specs as they are out of the box. So we have um, memory at 2000 megahertz and boost at 2620 MHz and a bandwidth of 384 gigabytes per second, which is very good. But now I will um, change back to our settings, which is very easy because I just memorized everything. So yeah, 1080 millivolts and the VRAM tuning, um, fast timing and 2112 and the power consumption plus 15%, the power limit, not the consumption, and the fan tuning to um, 67, 77, and 85. Once again, this is going to be different for every GPU, so just play along, okay? Just figure out the limits if you are trying to follow along, and if anything crashes, don't worry, because you cannot go over 1200 millivolts, and when you don't mess with the voltage, you don't increase it, Nothing can go wrong, like maybe it crashes or whatever, like if I do like 1080 millivolt and 2.95 gigahertz on the GPU core, it will crash, but it doesn't really matter, it only looks bad, okay? It doesn't hurt your GPU in any way, shape, or form, so I will just go back, and um, yeah, 1080 millivolts. With these settings, GPU-Z should show us a sizable benefit, at least on paper, and it does matter in games. Now our bandwidth like went up from 384 gigabytes a second to 405 gigabytes per second. That is a decent difference. Um, 405 minus 384. We gained about 21 gigabytes a second on our VRAM, which is exceptional, and it it does make a difference. Like my FPS in Cyberpunk went from like around 60 to around 70, which is it makes a lot of difference especially in games like where you were like maybe at like averaging 57 fps but now it is like 65 so games that fail to stay like at a 60 fps average with this overclock and undervolt not only is your gpu going to run cooler and more stable and last longer you are going to stay above 60 fps in those games so yeah everything is good we are able to see our clock speeds that we set here and yeah that is basically it that is how you overclock